Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the very first episode of The Sales Journey. I'm your host, Matt Bro, And on this episode, we're gonna get to talk to Mr. Derek Williams. He's the owner and operator of Three Link Sales Consulting out of San Jose, California. Now his mission is to help organizations stand up sales development teams and help them be successful in their industry. Now, in this conversation, we really get deep into Derek's entrepreneurial journey. Now, Derek has been a high-performing sales professional and leader for some of the largest tech companies before striking out on his own. And I gotta be honest with you, the most impressive thing about Derek is that he's very self-aware and he's focused on helping other people better themselves. So guys, I've been following Derek for some time now, and I know this conversation is gonna bring value. So guys, let's get it. So ladies and gentlemen, Matt Bro here, really excited to be bringing Mr. Derek Williams to the conversation today here on the Sales Journey Podcast. Uh, as I mentioned in the intro, uh, Derek has a tremendous uh, background in the sales development arena, and I'm looking forward to you guys hearing from and getting to know Derek, uh, his journey, what he's learned so far. And like I said in the intro, and it's not just something to be said, make sure you get your paper and your pen. You lean in, you open up your ears, your mind, and you really take this stuff in because I think that there's really some some power in listening to what Derek's got to say here. So Derek, thank you so much for joining us. Looking forward to talking to you today, man. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Happy Saturday to you. Thanks for having me on. It's uh, it's an honor to be here. I haven't been on very many podcasts, uh, so it's uh, definitely an honor to get this opportunity. I appreciate it, man. Absolutely, man. As, as I said in the, the intro, uh, I followed you for some time on Instagram, man. I love your vibe. Love the, you know, it's, uh, I think today would not classify as a casual Friday or a casual <laughs> Saturday. So uh, that's right. That's right. I have right? a collar on, so I guess I'm not too casual. But, not as, uh, not, I'm, I'm more casual than the casual guy. What is that? Uh, but now, nah, man, really excited to have you here and, and kind of talking through a few things. So if you will, for the folks that, you know, this is the first time getting to know you, um, kind of kind of give us what's gotten you to where you are today, man. Well, uh, man, I think there's a lot that's gotten me to me where I am today. And one thing definitely has been, been the support system. Uh, but you know, the journey has been, been long. It's been over 20 years that, you know, I've been doing the B2B sales game, if you will. And, uh, you know, it's, it's something that I feel like, um, you know, I was, I've been very passionate about. So I think passion's pulled me through in a big way. Cool, man. Cool. What, so what's, what's driven you to do what you, what you do every day? I mean, what, what's kind of behind that? Well, I mean, right now, as you know, uh, I'm you know, running up my own, you know, independent consultancy uh, and you know, what's driving me is to, to grow that and, and build a, some sort of legacy from, from that. You know, I've been, wanting to be an entrepreneur for a very long time. I started at a very young age, starting out, you know, doing the little neighborhood business and then, you know, doing some right. side ventures you know, coming, coming along. But this, this three link venture has kind of been my baby for a long time and it's been incubating for quite a while. And so it's, it's, that's what drives me is turning this into a reality, manifesting something that I've been stewing on for a long time. Absolutely, man. And like the sales development world, what I really like about it is like you're getting people to, likely stretch into something that they haven't done before. Right. Like mm-hmm, exactly. that is like, exactly. and, and for some people it's a rel- revelation of like where I want to do for the rest of my life. That, that's a pretty cool. Yeah. Or, or yeah. Or whether I don't want to do it for the rest of my life. I mean, it's, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, it's, uh, you know, it definitely tests you in a big way. I mean, sales development uh, is a great opportunity for people who are want, you know, wanting to get into B2B sales, uh, particularly in technology right now. And uh, you know, so, being able to help people through that process uh, is, is, is a great opportunity, but yeah, they're definitely strapping up, up for, for quite a challenge and uh, you know, it takes quite a bit of focus and, and effort and motivation and sort of willpower to muster through your, your first couple of years in sales development. Right on, man. Right on. So, you know, like, like I shared with you and I know we've talked about it a couple of different times. I think the, the power um, of this conversation is really, you're in the middle 
uh, if not starting parts of the journey, right? Like you're in the middle of that journey. Um, very much in the beginning, very much in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, what, what the goal here is that it's all a journey, right? Like if we, if we focus on like, you got to have the Lambos and the private jets and you know, the, the, you know, the condo on the beach and Tahiti or whatever the case may be before you can really start hearing a voice. Um, I think we're missing out on a ton of value and a ton of relevancy. I know when I listen to folks, uh, I, I really try to connect like how relevant is what they're telling me like go buy a three million dollar condo and get the cash flow and now you're I'm going how do I connect that right so for me it's really like you know folks that are working a nine to five and and those types of things and wanting to branch out and go do their own thing that's the thing that I get inspired by the 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 content that you put out the message that you start talking about it's speaking to the SDR but by modeling what you're doing you, you really inspire me to really, you know, think about, Hey, like he, he's like a couple steps ahead of me. So like, how do I learn some of those things to just kind of keep moving forward? And I do that with everybody that I kind of connect and follow with. Um, so I'm really excited to kind of talk about, you know, you, when you and I were talking about, you had two kind of big lessons that you've learned so far. And one of them really stood out to me. So if, if you'll tell the audience a little bit about like maybe the one major lesson that you've learned so far. Yeah, it's uh, and I, I, what I did is, you know, obviously in preparing for this conversation, um, you know, you, you gave me some a good outline that you know, to, to help me prepare. And I, I think I told you, if I, it forced me on a Saturday, coincidentally, to sit down and really reflect uh, over the last year and this journey that I've been on, because I'm very much at the beginning of my journey, like you said, in terms of entrepreneurship and starting out my own independent consultancy. But you know, the, the journey has been long prior to that to get to this point. So there's always these new plateaus. It's never overnight success, right? Yeah, definitely, definitely never overnight <laughs> success. But, you know, the, when I thought back through the year of the things that personally and professionally that really uh, I grappled with, uh, you know, in terms of journey, and one of them was this, the, the, the challenge that I faced being so hyper-focused on my goal, right? My vision of building a, a, a company out of nothing, right? And, and being a guy that doesn't come from a lot, um, you know, minimal education, not a lot of resources as a kid, all that kind of thing. Um, it's it's really I want it to be inspiring to people, but it's just it's a, it's really hard and it takes a lot of focus and it's not going to be easy. And I make a lot of sacrifices and I put a lot of long hours up late, um, you know, up early. You know, you do all those things, and and the people around you. Are impacted by that one way or the other. I have three daughters, uh, mm-hmm. 21, 18, 15. Uh, I have a granddaughter. My 21 year old daughter has a, has, a, has a daughter as well. She's a year and a half. I have my wife, who I love dearest, and she's my best friend. Um, but God bless their souls, what they put up with. You know, I mean, you know, we have a very close family, but um, you know, I'm very dead focused on, on building Three Link. And in that process, there's a lot of tension that could come about. And so I think that's the lesson that I wanted to share with your listeners is that anybody who's at the beginning of their year, sales career, uh, entrepreneurship, um, learning of an instrument, playing basketball, and, and just spending every hour consumed and focused on that goal of whatever you're trying to build and become great at. Uh, along that way, you got to, it's important that we remember that it's, we can't get mad at the people around us for not seeing our vision, not working towards our vision, not marching to the beat of that drum the way that we do every day in, in, innately, right? Because it's our vision, you mm-hmm. know? Um, so don't be mad at the people around you. And I, I, I say this because I've gone through those struggles, right? And a year ago, it's literally been a year, Matt. I don't know if you've seen that, but if you go back to my beginning posts on Instagram, that's where we, we met. Uh, it was November-ish, November, December of 2017. So I just passed the one-year mark of uh, putting out content actively and, and trying to create a brand, thus the logo behind you, right? <laughs> right? So I've been trying to create this brand awareness, and I knew it was going to be a long process and build up to do this. Um, so again, just kind of thinking back, it's been a year of doing this, but not everybody along the way has um, responded the way that you would envision when you go into something for the first time, right? You, you kind of assume and you, you see your friends, your family, your, uh, your acquaintances even, just you see people responding to it in, 
and uh, supporting it, right? So specifically, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine who I also met on Instagram. His name's Raul, uh, Mr. Universal. Go check him out. A uh, good friend. He, uh, we were talking at the gym one day about this exact challenge. Like he's putting out content and he's, his friends and his family aren't responding to it, right? They're not sharing. They're not liking. It's like, what, what's, what's going on? How can you, why aren't you? I, mean, I know it sounds silly, right? It sounds like, dude, it's just a like. My, fi- my, my family unfollowed me, man. So, <laughs> wow, wow. <laughs> They're like, wow. dude, I can't, I can't take all the positivity and encouragement. I'm like, what's that about, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? No, I feel you. That's ex- I mean, and, uh, and that's, the, that, that's a, another a good example, dude. Like, you're, that, those things are going to happen. But I think another point that I'd make is that it's, it's in us to sort of process that. So when we say we can't be mad at them, it's also there's some action behind that. Like, you know, it's, it's, really, it's literally being in that moment and saying, I'm realizing it's that EQ thing, right? That emotional control and saying, hey, look, I, I, I know I'm dealing with this. This is upsetting me. I'm, I'm looking at it on Facebook. I'm looking on Instagram. I'm seeing the lack of engagement. I'm seeing people engage other but not engage with my things. I'm seeing, you know, you know, I love my wife dearly, but, you know, and she's active on Instagram and she's seeing other people. I'll have to tell her, baby, look at the last three posts. You haven't liked them. You know, I'll audit my stuff, you know? <laughs> and uh, right. again, it's, you know, I make that joke, but for some people who are starting out and really take this serious, serious like I do, it means a lot. And, and so when they're not, responding the way you do you have to internalize it and accept that and i've realized that this is a perfect example of what you don't get from the people you expect it from you do get from people like you the people you, that you meet new the, the energy you're putting out will attract the people that you want to attract if you do it right and, right so i think I, I talk a lot about just the process of you know starting out new and being hyper focused on something and being somewhat selfish of in your time and your energy and family, your friends, people close to you, whoever that is, may not respond the way that you expect them to. And that, that's okay. That, that has right to be on. okay. Yeah. So I think that there's kind of like two things in that, that I heard, like the first one, you kind of started it off with um, really talking about that, the amount of work, right? Like we, we kind of joke, like Saturday's apparently our day. <laughs> Right. Like I hit you up on a Saturday, got you thinking and doing homework. I don't know what that's about. And then, and then we, we talking, you know, on, on for today. So as you think about, I mean, there's so much, there's such a voice out there right now for entrepreneurs. And I think it's, I mean, to a certain degree, it's required. Like you've got to be laser focused. You've got to pour tons of execution. You've got to, you know, poor, you've got to take time from something, right? right. And, and there's going to be those sacrifices. So I guess, you know, like if you're thinking about the voices of like, if I've got 24 hours and I'm going to sleep, let's say eight of them or six of them, right? Like, do I pour all my time into it? Like, how do you, how have you balanced that when you think about the sacrifices and the strain it could cause? Uh, how are you managing through that starting up something as new as, as three links? Right, right. You know, I'm, I'm facing tremendous odds, right? I, I definitely see myself as an underdog in, the, in the, the endeavor that I'm undertaking here. And so, you know, I'm being somewhat relentless. And, um, you know, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm not showing a lot of mercy. Uh, if, if, if you're not with me, mm-hmm. so on and so forth, right? Um, and it's not, you know, I, I have this, um, this concept of mad lion. And uh, you see this tattoo in my arm. It's, it's that, man, like I'm to be taken serious about what I'm working on. And I hope you can appreciate that. And if you don't have something that you're passionate about, that you're working towards, um, don't be upset that I do. Right. And so uh, how do I balance it? I don't, I don't, I don't balance it very well, Matt. I'll be honest with you. I right. just don't, you know, I don't even, I read this book called, um, I think you may have it's called the one thing. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep great book and you know that was kind of the, the first lesson it was just that process of really honing down and ratcheting down to focus on one thing um, but he talks about in that book about not trying to balance but actually trying to counterbalance because if you think about balance you're trying to maintain something in the middle and you're trying to stack things on top of it and trying to keep them stable which inevitably is going to come down come crashing crashing down I'm sorry um, whereas you think of like keeping things on the opposite side of the pendulum instead and right. counterbalance it. and you're never going to 
find that that perfect balance and so you have to accept that and hopefully you have the people around you that understand and are on your team because as much as i say that you know i've struggled with that tension with with my uh relatives people around me i also have to say that they have been the greatest support system for me. right like i would not be in the position that i am right now if it was not for the people around me particularly my wife and so that that it's a paradigm that you don't escape when you're trying to pursue these kinds of things and you're going to run up against tension you're going to run into challenges and you, know, you hope that the people around you understand and you can work through it but i think that goes back to the lesson is that you have to be humble and you have to understand that this is your vision and you can't expect you can't ruin the relationships around you um in, in pursuit necessarily right but I think, again, I don't try to balance it. You know, my, my family is pretty good about understanding that I'm, you can pretty much always find me at my desk uh, right here where I'm at right now working and concentrating on trying to, to build something. And so, yeah, I lose out on, on, on time with friends. Um, I'm not going to the games like I like to. I just like going to the Warriors games a lot. And, right. But one of the things I do to help just kind of internalize everything and process through it is going to work. I work out a lot. You see me putting up posts on going to the gym and things. And, um, so I think that's that's a big piece of it is at some point you have to break free from all of it. Whatever you're working on that you're passionate about, the people around you kind of just got to get alone at certain points. And whatever that looks like. Some people it's a walk at the beach. Some people it's, you know, sitting quietly in, uh, at a park. Uh, for me, it's going to the gym. And, and I used to work out to try and get fit, and maintain a certain physique. But you know, now I, I really just work out to keep my mind straight. To be honest right. With you. Yeah, and and it's you know I asked the question around balance because there's so many people that talk about like you know, work life balance or whatever the case may be. Like I've never been able to find that, um, and I, I don't even like I've never felt the need to try because like to me it's like I've always strived for presence, and I'm a firm believer that you know if my family and my home life is falling apart. Guess what? My work is not that great. Like it just does not. Cause I am, I like the part of me is I'm an all in, like if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. And, but I can't do it without like, you know, developing. So I've got to be that person before I kind of get there. So like, I've got to spend time making sure that like I'm, I'm developing myself, reading books, spending time with people that kind of stretch me and urge me and those types of things. I mean, time with my wife and my kid and, doing all those types of things because it feeds me to be able to do the work stuff, right? Like, so it's not a, because it's like, I, and there's a guy I followed Tyler Jack Harris on Instagram um, and uh, Sean Whelan. Uh, Sean Whelan does this thing called Core Four. Uh, he's got a book out on Amazon that that's really, really uh, good. It's short, but it gets you to the point. He has a way of delivering it. And it talks about your body. Uh, it talks about your relationships. It talks about your development. It talks about your finance, which is your work. And it's, you've got to have goals. You got to have kind of a, an intentional, purposeful focus, but you got to be all in in all four areas because one area is touched by the other three. Like your relationship is dictated by your fitness. And I mean, your, your mind, like if you're kind of losing it, not as sharp and you're not developing and you're just being stagnant and your spouse is moving without you, like you're not moving together. Like those types of things, like that whole idea of balance to me is, it's interesting. And I, and I wanted you to kind of tell you, I mean, I'm so glad that you, your perspective well, you know, think, is. You're kind of talking, one, yeah. One thing that gets to my mind while you're talking is, is cause we're, both of us have sales in common yeah. and sales. And we always talk about, and we talked about this before, everybody's selling something. Yeah. You know? And so that's, we all get that. Um, you have to sell the people around you on it. So I think going into what I did, I think that's what I failed to mention was that I closed the deal on what we were getting ready to get into. We were embarking on this journey. I had an anticipation of how hard it was going to be. I have seen my dad try out many times and you know, tried many times in, in building companies. And, um, so I'm, I'm looking at this saying, you know, we're, we're strapping in for something that's going to take some time and it's going to take a lot of sacrifices and it's going to alter the way we live. And so I, prior to the, I mentioned earlier, November, December timeframe is when we I kicked the whole push, kicked off the whole push. And um, you know, before that, months before that, I was in I was socializing it with the wife and the kids and 
um, getting them kind of excited about what this could, could become. So right. I think that when you, when you talk about the family component of it, wife moving without you, husband moving forward without the other person, that, that disconnect that could potentially happen, um, I, I made sure that I had them in the seat, but they understood part of that was going to be, I was going to be traveling quite a bit. I was going to be working a lot of long hours. I wasn't going to be as present as, as I wanted to be physically, but the connection is always there. Right. I'm not, not disconnected necessarily. So yeah. And another thing that comes to mind on what you were just talking about, the four, four, four um, everything happens in relationship. My dad has been drilling that into my head since I was a kid. He wrote books. Everything happens in relationship. And so whether it's relationship to your, friends and family, your spouses, et cetera, your, your work life, your finances, like you talked about, your own personal development, your physical component, which is, like you said, a big deal. Um, it all works together. And in the book, one thing, he talks about that, you know, the, the, the physical component, about the, the willpower that it requires to focus on one thing and to build one thing. Um, we overlook the physical component quite a bit. We, we think that this mental fortitude is this magical thing. And it really derives from physical components. And so taking care of ourselves is, is vital to that. So everything works together. Like you said, it's that harmonious approach of, um, I'm going to be great. I have to tackle a lot of areas. And so, yeah, we're, we're, we're definitely being mindful about our finances and a new entrepreneur getting into the whole tax right. realm and all of that. Yeah. 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 So it, there's a lot it's of just part of the year for you here, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, absolutely, man. So, so I have to look that book up. I'm have to look that book up for sure. Thanks for that. Yeah, absolutely. And 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 you know, on this interview, I actually I'll I'll tag a link in the bottom of it for anybody that's wanting to check out that book. Again, very uh, to me, it's it's very simple to the point. Sean has a way with words. Uh, if you're if you're worried about uh, some some curse words and things like that, you probably won't want to pick it up. But if you want real talk by real real adults, then that's the book to talk about and the book to kind of absorb. Um, but as I think about like so so you've got this vision right three link consulting. I do remember you kind of kicking it off and launching it. I mean you're embroidering hats and doing t-shirts and I mean you got like the whole thing going after it. Um, but but as you've kind of got this vision right and and you've got it can't be just just social media right like they didn't right. like it or they didn't comment to it so so talk to me about like like as you're getting more of that attention as you're making your charter your vision known to the world like what did you come up against um that, that well you that, yeah i have a good story for you actually on that um so it's it's not social media related it's just Hopefully we all have mentors at certain points of our career, right? Everybody should, if you, if, if some if you're not uh, seeking out a mentor, if you don't have mentors, then you're right. missing out on probably the most massive way of, of growing you know, books and videos and all that is, is wonderful. But having that personal connection with someone who's been there and done that, who's going to walk you through that and kind of hold your hand is important. So um, I think I came up against resistance to my, my idea by a really well-respected mentor of mine. And it wasn't, it, it, it was, it was well meaningful uh, criticism of the idea. And part of it was, was right. You know, my model of trading time for money it was, it was a critique that he had. And I absolutely agree. I'm still at this point, you know, you, and I think anybody who's kind of in that pursuit of, building wealth and all those sorts of things understands that um, trading time for, for money is not scalable. So right. um, that was one of the critiques that he had for me. And then just the overall concept of, of sales development was not something that he was 110% bought into. We can go down that road at a separate time about, you know, sales development, yay or nay. Um, but I took it because, you know, he had been a mentor for me for, for about a year and uh, someone I, I and it's still to this day, we're good friends and I definitely look up to him. He's a very successful person. And, uh, anyway, so the, the point of the matter is he, he, it, that criticism, that critique of my, my business model, uh, for someone that understood how important this was and what it could mean, uh, it, it was disheartening. You know? And there, there was a point where it was, should I even do this? Someone is, that I look up to and trust that much should, should I even do this? And I really doubted myself for, for quite some time. And, uh, you know, I, I pushed, yeah, go ahead. 
So how do you get past that, man? Like, you know, especially if it's like, because, you know, I, I, a relative that doesn't do what you do, having a critique, right? Like, oh, okay, okay, you know, we're close, right? But a mentor that has poured into you, that you have a great relationship with, that you obviously respect, right? Um, how do you get past that opinion? I mean, obviously you have to, the first thing was, again, going back to that sort of emotional control, you can't react to everything. I could have just, you know, what the F, uh, you know, I, in, in your right. mind, you could be angry. And of course I was, you know, dude, what, WTF, like, come on, yeah. you're supposed to have my back. But I felt, and I knew it was, it was all positive and, and it, it was meant for the good. So I, I tried to find the lesson in it. You know, you try and just realize that you, you peel away what you don't like about the critique, the feedback, and you focus on what you can learn and apply. And I did that. So, you know, I took the, I, I, it was good feedback, you know, in terms of the model. Uh, so it helped me in forming it. And I think one of the, less, one of the lessons I, I put in my email to you was about focusing on one thing. I keep coming back to that. And that was part of that whole conversation, that tension that I faced in that feedback um, forced me to start thinking about other things. And so I started, uh, if you remember early on with the, the whole three link venture uh, journey, I was doing, trying to do training and coaching and independent oh, yeah. sales agent. I was yeah, trying to be man. everything to everyone, right? Yeah, we kill it. And that was because I got some of that kind of feedback where it kind of pushed me down that path. And then again, so I, I just, uh, I came back to the concept of just doing what I'm good at. For many years, companies have been hiring me to build sales development teams. And I've, I've done that successfully. And it's been a right off in the sunset situation shortly thereafter, right? You come in, you build the team, you put the infrastructure in place, um, you, you hire the people, you, you ramp that, and then you have this sort of self-sustained uh, growth engine within your startup environment. And so then that, once that's kind of been constructed, you can kind of go to a maintenance mode, but because these are typically small companies, small teams, you, you that that function can be absorbed by other areas in the business and so you know i would write off and do other things so my point is how i got through it is i just trusted the fact that hey i've been getting paid by people to do this already on an employment basis in w2 um and i can do this on a project basis i know i can do this on a project basis uh and so that's where i'm at i'm doing it on a pro temporary project basis i'm coming in i'm designing the team, helping to design the team, I'm helping to recruit and staff the team uh, and all the things that go into that. And then I'm helping sort of ramp the team up. And then once that team of maybe three or four sales development reps are in place, uh, I move on. So I just trusted the fact that the model had already been established. Um, I knew it was gonna be, it's something new and unique. And so I couldn't expect everybody to buy in. Like there's not a lot of people doing sales development implementation consulting, right? There's just not a lot of us out there. And so I knew that the idea of that would face some resistance. So I think I had to be accepting to that fact. I had to get past my own sort of, um, you know, self doubt that, w that came about as a result of the feedback mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and trust in the fact that, um, you know, do what you're already good at. You know? And I think that's, that's what I did. I just trusted and believed in the fact that I would be good at something I was already good at. And uh, so I doubled down. That's right, funny. right. Yeah. And I think, you know, as I, as I think about the kind of the, what brings to my mind is that you have, you have kind of a way that you went and then you kind of, in a way, pivoted a little. Um, was that driven off of the feedback from your mentor or was that driven off of other things? Good question. Really good question. So, yeah, I think it was catapult. I wouldn't say catapult, more just accelerated by the feedback by, by my okay. mentor. Yeah. It was because there was already a desire to, a lot of, like yourself, we have a wide sweeping skill set. Right? There's a lot of things that we're good at, right? There's a lot of things. I mean, just podcasting, for instance, alone could be one thing that we do. But I mean, that's we could do more, right? We could do this. Yeah. I can do that, and I can. It all can converge, and you get excited about the opportunity of all of these things that you can do. Yeah. And so, containing that excitement is 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 really hard, and just focusing on one thing. So. Um, yeah, I, I was already at a point where I was trying to do a lot and was considering all the things I could do and was soliciting feedback from everyone. 
right? People who didn't even know they were my mentors were my mentors, right? <laughs> Social media and just friends and, mm -hmm. and influence and people that I've met along the way into my career. So yeah, um, but I had a lot of other good feedback though too, right? I had other people that were um, in the space, if you will, that thought it was a great idea and supported it. And I, I honestly wouldn't be, again, I mean, I talked about my support system, but you know, my network is why I have clients today, right? My, mm -hmm. my clients have come by way of my network that I've established. So again, there was the, the feedback definitely accelerated that whole pivot into other things. Uh, I was already kind of on the fence, you know, looking at doing that. Um, but the minute, dude, I'm not kidding. The minute, literally, I, I was, and we can go down the path of the struggles you face financially and trying to start a business and cutting the salary and the, <laughs> the just what that does to your right. whole, whole being. Um, right, you're used to a certain lifestyle, and then you kind of cut bait and you take that chance. But you know. Uh, yeah, it was, it was definitely a challenge that way, man. Um, but dude, the minute I focused on one thing and I ignored that feedback, I took it for what it was worth and I just focused on one thing. I stopped trying to be everything to everyone. The minute I put all my energy, my thought processes and my, my activity into that one thing, it popped. And look, I'm somewhat religious, you know, um, so I just literally thank God that, that my first client, was a was a referral from an old manager of mine right he, he i had floated the idea of three link in my consulting by him uh, i had worked with him on building out a sales development team and uh, he had moved on to be a vp of sales at another big company and he had a good friend that was taking on a temporary ceo position um, due to a, a private equity purchase and uh you know, so he, he referred me. He said, hey, they're trying to, they want to scale the business. They have a new, you know, new goals now that the company's been purchased. They have a new private equity firm and, you know, taking over and they want to grow this thing. And they, the sales development would be a great model for, for their business. And this is not even a technology, mind you. This is a manufacturing company. Point mm -hmm. of the matter is when I focused on one thing and I started, again, started socializing it to people that I had this available, it was, it popped and I got my first client and it's, you know, I've been, I've maintained that focus ever since and I've been able to acquire uh, more, more clients and, you know, I have proposals out to other potential clients as, as we speak. So, um, yeah, I think just that going through the torturous process of trying to figure out what that one thing is that you want to do when there's so many things you could be doing. I mean, I, I love sales development. I love the, the building of sales development. I love the people in sales development, the technology, but there's, I can do more than sales development. So I kind of felt like I was selling myself short a little bit, but I, I, I trusted the fact that if I just focused on one thing and ratcheted it down, I would have, I would have better success. So part of this was, you know, you know, just energy, putting out the right energy. Right. Uh, and, 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 you know, you mentioned, um, and it, just kind of hearing your story, like, right. So <clears throat> having this vision, spending time in, in some of the largest organizations, building sales development teams, uh, that transition from, you know, having a salary and a certain lifestyle into this kind of entrepreneurship, jumping off the cliff kind of type thing, which is uh, something that so many people want to do, right? Um, I can't help but think about, and, and I mean, kudos, like the thing that sticks out to me, like as I follow you and I hear you kind of talk, you have a amount of like self-awareness and, and I think it's a lot to do with you put people around you, that network you talk about that gives you cont continuous trusted feedback that kind of helps you understand yourself more, right? Like there's so many people that in, in entrepreneurship isolate themselves that I see. They don't get the feedback. And then they, they question like, when should I pivot? Like, when should I do something different? Like, cause they would have stayed with the 20 different things you were trying to do. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, and they'd be back at the nine to five right now, pissed off. <laughs> But, you know, so before we kind of jump into the next segment and I think about, you know, all of the experiences that you've had that have kind of led you into where you are today, right? Um, backing up a little bit because you're fresh from it, right? You're within, you're within a year of it. Yep. Like, 
I mean, I'm just thinking about the person that's listening to this and going, okay, like I'm in my nine to five. I know I've got this skill set. I've got this strength. I got this thing that I want. I got this entrepreneurial spirit, right? I have the actual fortitude to do it. But talk to me about that jump. Talk to me about like what was there, what was here going from the nine to five to, to three link. Right, right. No, good question. I mean, think being, I was spent five years working on sales development inside of startup environments, right? So you're building out a new function inside of a new company who has a new product. And so entrepreneurship and the spirit that, that it embodies was all around. All around you. Yeah. So, it was, it, so there, there's that component. You, so when you, when you've been immersed around that, you, the, if you feel like, what am I doing? I got to make this jump. Right. And then it's just, you know, like you kind of go back, like you said, and it's, it's been ingrained from in me from, from a young age. I knew I wanted to be my own boss. Um, I, I read rich dad, poor dad. I think when I was like 13 or 14 years old, when it first came out, you know, it was like, it was forced reading by my dad, by the way. Um, <laughs> Good dad. So making that, making that jump, what was in my head, I think, you know, part of it was I already, I had the, the desire to do it. Like you said, some person listening to this already has that, that, Hey, I want to be an entrepreneurship. So I, I put myself in preparation mode as much as possible. I immersed myself you know, I listened to the podcasts. Um, I read the books. Um, I, I did everything that I could think of to kind of, um, get myself ready. You know? mm-hmm. So I, I obsessed on my preparation and being in that entrepreneur environment. I definitely took cues from, you know, entrepreneurs that I was you know, around and working for. Um, and so that was, that was a big part of it. And then making the jump again, upstairs in terms of methodically making the jump, uh, you know, there's certain, you got to make sure your, your finances are, are, as ready as possible. And so I think that's probably the biggest question that people probably face is, you know, when am I ready financially? Like, how am I, and I'm not going to go down the path of, you know, make sure you have six months of this reserve, et cetera, et cetera. And the point that I'm going to make is you're never going to be ready and things will figure themselves out. You will figure it out. Yeah. Right. I, I, your back's against the wall. You'll make a way. Right. That's what we did. We, there was months we were trying to figure out how we we're going to pay the rent. And, uh, yeah. If you burn, if you burn the boats, you got to go in the, uh... Take the yeah, land. Right, exactly. You got to take the land. Exactly. So that's, um, I think that, I think that is probably what a lot of your listeners would, would be facing who are, who are at that point and in terms of making that jump in your, in your heart. Um, I, I got another quick story for you. So three link, I, you started following me in 2017, 2000, late 2017, we'll say we'll call it 2018. Um, I registered the federal employer tax ID number for three link in 2008. <laughs> this yep. is a yep. fact. This I, is I, a fact. <laughs> I, don't, I don't doubt it, man. I, I've done the I, same thing. I've registered I have the paperwork here somewhere. <laughs> so yeah. my, my, point, my point is I, I registered this business a long time ago. The vision was a long time ago. I, the, so I think what your listeners are probably hearing from that is preparation, having a vision, just deciding on what you're going to do. You know you're going to do something. Right. So come up with your concept, come up with your, you know, your, I mean, the whole three link was, was already embodied. Right. And I don't, that, that, where that comes from, but I already had that. I knew it was going to be consulting. And so I figured it out early. And so I think that's, I figured out early what I wanted to do. It's an idea, a direction. I didn't have, a, I did, still didn't have sales development. I mean, sales development, I kind of stumbled across, I'll be honest with you. I had ideas for other things. Again, that goes back to trying to do 20 different things. Um, All right. So, Preparation, settle on something, um, take action. Don't just talk about it. Be about it, right? Go federal, file your paperwork. If you have to sit on that for a year or 10 years, you're sitting on it and you're brewing and you're brewing, you're reading, you're studying, you're building relationships and you're networking. You're, you're taking all the advice. You're incubating as much as you can. And at some point, you just got to make that jump. And you're never really going to be ready to make that jump. So I guess that's the best answer I can give you, man. It's like, for me, it was, there was no, there was no deadline. There was no, um, Hey, go and do it at this point. And simple fact, this is probably, what will help. I mentioned earlier, uh, I had worked with for about five years with startups Four, five startups, five years. Mm. I worked for five startups in five years and 
each time it was the same type of exit where, you know, as we know, sell, so startups, um, early stage startups can, can struggle quite a bit. And so, again, that's where the model came from. You don't need a full-time sales development manager at that early stage. You need someone to come in and build the infrastructure from that point on. Because what happened to me was, you know, there was a series of layoffs that happened consecutively. So that forced me to help figure this whole thing out. And it kind of, that was the, the lack of stability that I was already dealing with in the startup world. Um, it, it just, it, I need to take control of my manager at some point. Yeah, and what, what sticks out to me, because I mean, you, you kind of called it, um, you know, kind of letting it incubate or, or brew. But actually, the way I, like, the kind of the way I take it in is, is it never left you. Like you created this dream and a lot of people create dreams, right? Like they, they create, Hey, I want to go do X. I want to go do Y. And six months later, they're like, what was that letter again? <laughs> like they, they move and it's, it's the difference between purpose and it's the difference between like, I want the, whatever the result of it is. I see so many people that get off into creating a new business, which kind of explains the, you know, entrepreneurship 50% fail rate is like, they think, Hey, I, I dream it. Like I'm going to go sell this widget and I'm going to just blow up, man. Things are going to get big. Um, and I'm excited. And two months in, they're not passionate about it. They don't love it. They haven't been dreaming about it for 10 years, right? The persistence it takes to break through, you got to have that stuff, man. So like what, what sticks to me is like, if you're sitting here listening to this conversation and you got something that's been burning in you for years, right? Like, and it is, and it is something you just can't shake, or it's something that you're continuing to kind of iterate on and continue to refine and get different voices and spend time with people that are either in that space or close to that space or whatever the case may be. That's for you, right? If it's the new flavor of the month, take inventory, man. Like not everybody's meant to be entrepreneurs. Like it's perfectly fine. Right? <laughs> right? Like, yeah. yeah. And, and, and there's so many people that just say like, Hey, I'm going to jump into this adventure, not realizing how much it takes. Because what you just, what you talked about earlier is it's the getting your family on board. You couldn't have done that if it was the flavor of the month. It's something that you've been sitting on for that long. Like you knew the journey ahead. You were going to have to take family with. Right. Otherwise, it wouldn't work. No man is an island. Exactly. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So I, I don't know how much time we have left, but I just I want to get this out really. Yeah. It, you sparked a thought for me as well. Two things actually. Um, a the idea that um, uh, you know you're 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 going down this path uh, alone is obviously not not the fact. I agree with that. But um, when you're building this dream and you're kind of incubating, as, you, as we talked about you're dreaming about these things, you have it inside of you, it's in your heart to do this and you feel compelled. A lot of people don't talk about it. You know, a lot of people don't air that out. So that's, mm. you gotta speak your vision into existence as well, right? Mm. And that, that creates some accountability, right? I think we all know that about writing down your goals and what that does. But if you tell somebody that you're gonna start a business someday and yeah. it's gonna be consulting and around sales, <laughs> you know, like, you start getting some internal accountability building up, right? And so I'll, another point that I'll say is um, uh, Jeff Tebow, very, I mean, one of my most inspirational sales managers I've ever worked for, uh, sales directors, I should say. Um, I remember in my interview with him, I went to work for a company called Wise Technology here in the Bay Area, and I was going to work as an inside sales rep. So um, it was earlier in my career, and I had already done some management stuff, and, I already had an idea of what I wanted to do. I hadn't registered Three Link yet. It was 2000. Yeah, it was right before I registered Three Link, actually. So in the interview, you know, this happens to a lot of people. They ask you, "What's your five-year plan? Where are you going to be in the future? Where do you see yourself?" Those kinds of questions. And I'd always say, "I see myself running my own business." And I was very confident about it. You know, I got almost like the nerve of this kid, you know. <laughs> uh, and that, that's that was, and again. The, the gentleman I mentioned to you earlier that my, who referred me, uh, which resulted in my first client here under 3Link, um, same story. I remember interviewing with him and blowing them away in the interview. I'll, I'll brag a little bit there. And uh, cause I actually had to do a stand up in front of the whole management team and do a presentation and do this whole thing. And you know, they, they were throwing questions at me. And one of the questions was, where do I see myself? Where do you, where do you be 
doing in five years? You know, that kind of thing. What's, what, what are you working towards? And three link. That's what I, I dropped it on. So you got to speak your, 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 your vision into existence if you want to manifest. And the other thing I was going to mention is you got to make smart decisions. You got to position yourself, right? Like if you want to be a sales consultant down the road, even if it's going to take you 20 years to get there, you know, you got to make decisions along the way that are going to position you for that. Right. Right. Taking that, um, uh, and I, I love my marketing brethren, but taking that marketing position or maybe taking that uh, operations position because, you know, you kind of feel compelled to or because it's the flavor of the month as you were talking about, whatever, you know, and we, sometimes we get into position, get into roles by way of circumstance, right? So life changes, layoffs happen, and we get desperate and we have to get a job. And so yeah. take whatever is there. So my, my two points that I want to make is make smart decisions that position you for whatever that goal, that vision is, right? That help get you there. And then obviously speak your, your, your stuff into existence. You know, I, again, you, you got to talk about it if you want to be about it. Absolutely, man. It, it kind of helps you flush through the commitment to it. It helps you because I mean, if you, if you talk about it and you're not committed, man, it's, you won't talk about it for very long. I'll tell right. you that much. Hey, man, I thought, you were gonna be, I thought you were going to be running your own business. What happened to that whole thing? Uh, uh, yeah, well, I'm doing this other thing now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm just kind of hanging out over here. You know, that was that, it's oversaturated the internet, right? So, well, cool, man. You know, and I think those lessons, right? Like, I think there's, there's a lot of, of opportunity because there's people that are, A, either on the edge of that cliff ready to jump or they're in the midst of that free fall in the very beginning that are questioning, did I do the right thing? Uh, am I alone? I think the, the most powerful thing in what you shared is exactly the last thing you kind of ended with is if you are isolated and you're not sharing and you're not getting feedback and that network is not there, um, you can stall out pretty quick with just the demons we carry in our mind. And it, it's, it's so powerful to kind of take the thing that's given to us, I firmly believe people have gifts. And if your gift, you can't shake after 10 years, right? Like you owe it to humanity. It is, it is your responsibility to do what you're gifted to do instead of holding it up and being in a nursing home. I think Gary V talks a ton about being in a nursing home, regretting the thing that you should have done that you didn't. Right. So I, I very, very powerful lessons, man. So, um, what I want to do now is kind of shift to kind of from gratitude, right? Like, so I'm a big, I'm a big fan of learning lessons and talking about things that we've learned in the journey, no matter where we are in the midst of that journey, but in the middle of all of it, good, bad, and the ugly, what are you most grateful for? What do you, you know, what, what grounds you um, and why? Oh, uh, man, you're going to make me cry, Matt. <laughs> uh, man, uh, I am this opportunity. Uh, I, I don't want to appear as being um, insecure. Because, you know, I mean, there's a point where you can be so humble and so appreciative it's where it, it kind of looks weird. But I feel that way, man. Like, um, I'll be honest with you, dude. Like, I did not go to college. Um, I didn't even finish high school. I, I told I mentioned I had three daughters and one is 21. Uh, I'm 38. You did math. And I'm a grandfather already. So I have a tremendous amount of self-imposed pressure um, to, to provide and to build for, for my family. But, dude, I feel so grateful just to have this opportunity to be in this position, to be fulfilling what I set out to do. Um, I tell, you know, everyone that, I mean, it's, it's real talk, man. Like I am very, very grateful that I am where I am. I don't take for granted anything. Right. I, I have worked very hard and I've made a lot of sacrifices and to see even a small amount of, of success means a lot to me, man. Like I don't need, I don't, I didn't get into this to, to get rich. I mean, I, I didn't get into this to get the lamp hose and hmm. you know, that would be nice. I mean, who's going to say no to all those things, but I think that's literally not my intent. My intent is time. Right. I just, I want to build a lifestyle that um, I can you know, focus on the family and focus on um, not working so hard at some point. Right now you see me working really hard, but I'm you know, like they say, you spend a year or 
five, <laughs> working like a, <laughs> working like a, a crazy person, so yeah. that you can spend the rest of your life enjoying it. And you know, I'm just kind of playing that game. But I'm just grateful for the opportunity, man. Like I, you know, a lot of people uh, that are out there right now who maybe didn't come from a lot, you know, single family home. You know, my parents were never married. Um, my, my mom didn't go to college. Dad didn't get his degree until he was in his thirties. Um, so we've, you know, we've struggled, man. I come, I come from a very you know, humble background and to be where I am socializing and rubbing elbows with the people that I rub elbows with now and to just be at this point, you know, I'm very grateful for that. I never forget, you know, kind of my, my, my roots, but yeah, man, I think that's, it. there's no, there's not a day that I don't wake up and just, I'm grateful for what I'm manifest, what's manifesting. I shouldn't say what I'm manifesting, but what is manifesting, and um, the people around me. My, my, my wife has been a tremendous, tremendous uh, rock. They, there was a point along this journey. We mentioned the jump off point. You know, we knew that we weren't going to have, you know, there was going to be a gap financially, and so she took on a second job at, for a short period of time to fill that gap, so that. I could focus on the early days of 3D Link and you know, prior to you know, any revenue coming in. And so again, I'm so grateful for her. And you know, there's been times where I felt like giving up. There's been times where I feel like pivoting. And she's the one who's reminded me more than anybody else along this journey, do what you're good at. Do what people are already paying you to do. And so I'm, I'm just, to be where I'm at, to have the people around me who, who are around me, um, I'm grateful for my health. I mean, I, I to be able to operate and work out and, and, and work as hard as I do. And you know, I'm, I'm grateful that I've been blessed with uh, the physical component to, to sustain what this level of effort that I put out. So I'm grateful for a lot, man. I could go down the list for quite a lot of time, but definitely grateful for the opportunity. I feel like I'm an underdog. Um, not a lot of people reach the point of entrepreneurship and start generating revenue and having five figure clients and doing that sort of thing um, that have my background and so you know right. that inspires people anybody who's out there who who comes from uh, humble beginnings um and doesn't have all the resources you can do this shit man like yeah. you know, just put your head down focus you know like i, I say kill your distractions but don't uh, <laughs> don't, don't kill your don't excuses. literally That's yeah. yeah yeah don't kill your excuses uh yeah. execute your ex your excuses i, I think I was talking to a good uh, friend, Joe, and he was, I, I put a meme up and he said, kill your, kill your excuses. And he's like, yeah, I don't like kill, man. Uh, use a different word. Use something like uh, eliminate or something. <laughs> but yes, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for, for this too. Yeah, I'm right. grateful for this opportunity to be on this podcast. Um, I'm grateful that my story has resonated with people like yourself yeah. and compelled this, this, this conversation. Hell yeah, dude. And, and I'm, I mean, honestly, like for me, as I think about what you're grateful for, I mean, there's so many things that I take for granted. There's so many things that I don't even think about. Very similar. I mean, humble backgrounds. Um, I'm, I'm one, I was the first person in my family that went to college. Um, did it by the hair of my chinny chin chin too. Uh, it took it six years to get my, my four year, but um, but you got the paper, baby. You got the but paper. It, but it's a journey, right? And and you know, as you go through um, different things, I think you you tend to appreciate stuff. And like for me, like I love hearing how people think about gratitude because it it ate. I mean, selfishly feeds me. <laughs> but I think at the end of the day, people don't think enough about just being grateful for the journey, right? Like just being grateful for where where I am today and, and taking that inventory. So. I appreciate you sharing that. Um, so, so as you look forward, man, kind of where, where are you headed? Kind of goals, aspirations, like we're talking about accountability here. So you got to speak it out. <laughs> speak it out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for the longest time, and like I mentioned earlier, um, I'm, I'm glad that you're putting this out there for me. Man. Um, <clears throat> the longest time I thought three link was really the third. I am the third piece of the, the, uh, the other two links, right? I'm connecting buyers and sellers. I'm connecting, you know, people who are trying to get better at sales. I'm you know, connecting you to these, to growth. And so I, for the, for the longest time, it was just three link was me, an ability to work from home, uh, work on my own schedule, help you know, solve a real problem for, for businesses and, you know, make a, a good earning. 
but we're, I've quickly realized that people have encouraged me that I need to take my vision further. And um, so, yeah, I think the future, I don't know if it's 2019, but I would like to at some point be able to build this thing out and um, have a full blown sales consultancy that provides, you know, full project scope services for sales development and other things. Um, but when you think of the sales development implementation projects, it consists of design, staff, and, and scale. And those are all separate services. So I would like to branch out and provide uh, recruiting as a service. I've already added that out there. I have, I have it available. So you know, that, require, that would require some help. Mm -hmm. uh, Salesforce optimization projects, helping companies design their Salesforce instance. Um, I'm already doing that on a contract basis for, for clients. And so I would like to get some help with that. Um, I sell the concept of sales development, help companies build it out. It would, great, it would be great to have some sales development reps of my own to help us build this thing out. So you, I think you get where I'm going is there, there is a lot of staffing that could happen from this. I would love to build this into um, a, a full, a bigger company. You know, say, uh, I think you, I'm going to quote a rapper here. Forgive me. I think it's Rick Ross that said, uh, "Why, why unless it's uh, you know some of them?" But yeah, you're not a, you're not a real boss until you have employees. Yeah. Right? And so I know we, we want to be entrepreneurs, and there's no such thing as a solopreneur. I do buy into that. Like, you know, it's good what I'm doing, but I would love to be able to create opportunities for people too. You know, like like the opportunities that I had along the way. So if I can extend that, then then I want to be able to do that. So. Yeah, I think what's here, what we're going from here is additional service pro services, additional service offerings from, from 3Link, recruiting, Salesforce optimization, those are two things. Um, and being able to hire people and have employees that help uh, solve these problems for, for startups. So, yeah, and I, th I think the thing that I, I mean, like it's such a noble um, perspective is giving other people uh, a similar opportunity, giving other people, you know, an opportunity to join you on your mission, but at the same time to kind of help define their, their passion, right? Like that, that, that to me, like as an entrepreneur, like that is the thing that, that I get excited about. And I love hearing the stories of folks that like early on though, like the, the people that join up with you and go down that road, like building something out, like the massive amount of fulfillment that can come from that. It's gotta be huge. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, when you're part of something, it's, it's inspiring. Absolutely, man. So, so as we kind of wrap up here, man, um, and I know we've shared a lot of nuggets, like tons of stuff kind of going through the lessons and, and those types of things. But if there was one, you know, like you want the audience to hear this one thing, you know, what is that? Well, it's a quote that's probably driven me for quite some time. I don't talk about it on my page. Um, it's kind of personal, but I don't own it. I don't, I don't know who, who said it. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to fail in giving credit on this quote, but you never know how far you can go unless you take chances. And that's defined my, my career. You know, I've, I've gambled along the way quite a bit. Sometimes I've won, sometimes I've lost. Um, again, that goes back to not trying to maintain balance. You just, you're going to take losses along the way. And so at some point you got to make a jump. If you're, if you're going down the entrepreneur journey, there's, there's going to be a point where you may not go from safe land to safe land. You may have to just brave heart it. And uh, so, yeah, take some chances. Um, that's, that's really, that's really what comes down to that quote, I think embodies uh, my, my journey. Uh, you never know how far you can go unless you take some chances. Awesome, man. So how can the audience find you, man? How can they hook up with uh, Derek Williams? Well, thank you. Uh, threelinksales.com is the website. If uh, you want to find me on Instagram, that's the bar I hang out at. Uh, Threelink underscore sales. Um, and I say the bar that I hang out at, it's because I was on the Why and Buy podcast before and we were talking about why I'm pushing uh, sales development and these things on Instagram. And most of that, that audience is on LinkedIn. And uh, you know, I kind of chose one platform early on and I went all in on Instagram. And, um, Jeff uh, of the of the podcast, he he coined it as the bars that we hang out at. You know, so LinkedIn, yeah. the bar, Instagram's a bar, 
Instagram, three link underscore sales. Check me out there. That's kind of where you can see the full show. Um, but the website, if you want to learn more about uh, the consulting practices, uh, three link sales.com. Awesome, man. And, and, you know, let me just say thank you again uh, for spending some time with me today. Um, continue putting the vibe out, putting your content out, talking and speaking your truth. I think, honestly, at the end of the day, um, you're, you're attracting more and more of it. But at the same time, you're inspiring others to go do also. You know, I, I can guarantee you it's happening in many different ways that you don't even know. Um, but I just want to say thank you for, for doing what you do. Also, thank you for being here today and taking the opportunity. I mean, I know, like, I, I think I had another person that's going to be uh, on this conversation also in a different episode go, man, you sure do ask for a lot. <laughs> like, but, but I want to make that was, sure. That was my first thought. I was like, dude, man, I would just hop on and have a chit chat. Uh, but I, like I said, man, I, I, I took a step back. I, I actually appreciated that lesson because uh, it cemented the lessons that I've learned. So that definitely helped me. Awesome. With the, with the year review. Awesome, man. And the only question I got for you is the big part of this is it's a journey. It's not a one time conversation here. So I want to have you back. Do I have your commitment to get you to come back here in the future and just talk about the journey so far and what you've learned and, and just stay in touch with you? Absolutely, man. Absolutely. I'd love to. It's, a, it's been an honor to be here on the show. Um, I hope the uh, technical stuff comes through good for us and you know, I'll be happy to come back. Awesome, man. Well, thanks, Williams, and take it easy, sir.